my name is David Halliwell and one of my hobbies is railways. I enjoy pretty much every aspect of the hobby but for the last 20 years or so I've been building locomotives and rolling stock. However, a couple of years ago I decided that I'd try and have a layout in my garage. So I, I had this idea of building the scenery as quickly and as cheaply as I could and drawing on my experiences as a graphic designer I came to the idea that I might as well do them all on my computer. The software I use is Adobe InDesign which is the industry standard for all graphic designers. Let me show you how I do it. One of the notable buildings on, on my layout is this London North Western uh, goods warehouse. Um, it's quite a big building and it just about manages to fit onto an A4 sheet of paper as far as the height goes, but it's a lot wider in reality. So what I've got to do is make sure I can print it on an A4. So having designed it to the full size, it's a simple job of just bringing in a mask. I'll print that section and when it's printed, I just move that section out of the way, bring the mask over, and then print the other side. So what I'm going to do now is show how this, how this warehouse was arrived at by working backwards and de-layering it. Every one of these is a separate piece that's added in order to build up the image. So you get the idea, you get the picture. Even these, uh, the, the brick piers, that um, even these are, are, are grouped together so I can ungroup them and show you how they are constructed using different patterns of brickwork and different types of brick. One of the nice little features of this software is the ability to add shadows. There you can see a drop shadow. I can take off the drop shadow by just clicking that little arrow there and it's gone. And that's how you create the shadows. Uh, it's all down to the software. Put the drop shadow on that side. and it's given the lighting effect coming from the left. I just need to get, bring this one to the front. And then it just hides that little shadow there that we don't need. Another one of these, just place it there, reduce it in size and bring it in there just to get rid of that little bit of shadow at the bottom of that which isn't correct. There we go. One of the nice features of this software is the way you can uh, play around with type. And at the top of this building I've got this word goods, goods warehouse. And as you can see that's just the lettering straight on in white. And it just looks a bit stark. But what I can do is reduce that through any scale right down to something like 25%. And when you arrive on one that you're happy with, it gives the effect of the bricks coming through the tiles and just makes it look that more realistic. And while we're on the subject of bricks, I always use photographs of bricks rather than create them on a computer. So these bricks here are actually real bricks taken from photographs of real walls and that helps to make the whole thing far more realistic. Yeah, one of the ones that I really uh, pleased with the turnout, uh, with, with the result of it, is the, uh, the road overbridges, uh, which again are constructed from using uh, real photographs of uh, steel with rivets in and uh, rusty steel for the girders. 
This is, uh, as you can see, a photograph of a girder. It looks pretty good because it is, a, it is the real thing. It's not been uh, manufactured on the computer. And the beauty of it is when it's printed out, you have no painting. This is a terraced house. All the work's been done pretty much and ready to print it out now. As you can, at the moment, looking at that, it all looks a bit confusing, but, but there's a command here which I can simplify all that so you can see how it will look when it's printed. Let's see how this has turned out. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good, nice. Good even colour. Now the thing about this is, it's printed on uh, label paper, which is uh, adhesive backed, and in order to stick it down, all you need to do is with a scalpel blade or the edge of your nail, you, you peel back the, uh, the back backing paper, and it's already sticky, no messy glues. Yeah, okay, so we'll go to the next stage with that now. This is what we do now. Scalpel, ruler, cutting mat, quite clean, no mess, no fuss. Cut out the image directly up to the edge. And this is why you only peel it back part way. Get it exactly on the edge using the dry background, I, the bit that's still got the backing paper on because you can move that keeping the sticky bit just off the surface until it's lined up with the edge, lined up there, sticky bit down, peel off the background and then cut this out. Right, what I've done now is uh, I've cut out uh, a footprint of the building. It all helps to keep it square and nice and rigid and I'm going to glue this part to here and this part to here. Very good stuff this. That will be set in a couple of minutes. Yeah, and that's quite robust now. And now it's time to get inside the model. Right, so this is the model. Started it uh, approximately two years ago when I put the baseboards in. And all the buildings you see, everything is uh, printed out on the computer. Yeah, and this, this uh, concrete fence is probably worth a little mention. A lot of work went into this. Uh, made up of individual little panels, not individually glued, but individually uh, sought and printed. And they're all joined together in such a way that, I mean, you'll notice that the same one crops up more than once, but the split about. The effect is achieved by using real concrete. Uh, this is one of my trees, but uh, it's not a tree, of course. It's actually a plant and uh, last year this was growing in the back garden. Uh, it, after it had flowered it kind of dried out a little bit. So I've sprayed it green and I think that's a very acceptable tree and the cost, again, absolutely nothing. This was the first house that I did, the very first one to um, prove the theory side of it as it were. And uh, I went a bit overboard on this because it's got wallpaper in all the rooms and it's got furniture as well. Uh, but it's obvious, you, you can't see it. So it soon dawned on me, it was a waste of time doing all that for a uh, minimal effect. Uh, but that was the first one. This embankment started off life as um, this material. Uh, it's called teddy bear fur. You start off with a substructure. In this instance, it's blocks of polystyrene, a couple of inches thick, that came in some packaging that we uh, had delivered. 
and the, it's dead easy to work. You just crumble it away until you get the shape you want. And then this is glued to it using wallpaper. And then when your wallpaper's set, you get some scissors and you just start chewing away at this fur to break it down so it looks like patchy grass. And then emulsion paint, plenty of it, nice and watery. Slap it all over and then you start to put other colours on it and other textures and uh, you end up with something like that. So that's how I do it, why don't you have a go?